Hi, folks. Thank you for joining us here on the SOM Live podcast. This is Corky McCorkle, and our guest this week, Mr. Dangerous Dan Matthews. Dan, thank you for joining me uh, here today. Pleasure, Corky. Uh, now, let's see. Now, Dan, you, you've been here at SOM for... Has it been about two years been now? Been about two years now. Been about two years. You, you came here shortly after I did, and uh, but you've been in in wrestling uh, quite a while before SOM. Uh, if you if you count uh, these past two years, it's thirteen years in the business now. Thirteen years. Thirteen years in the business. <laughs> and what do we find out now? You're still considered a rookie until twenty years. Um, that's. That's a consensus 15 to years. some. <laughs> Fifteen years. That's a consensus to some. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I've met plenty of guys that uh, have uh, had twenty years in the business, and, and uh, they should be rookies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah uh, you know, I'm. I, I don't. I don't consider myself above anyone. You know, uh, I, I. You know, I know enough to get guys uh, along and and uh, get them through matches and everything with me and. You know, I consider that a, a good trait to have and everything, but uh, I don't have an ego of any kind or whatsoever. You know, 13 years, it's uh, usually if I just say 13 years to somebody, they go, oh, okay. And then right along we go and we go right into a conversation about it and everything. So, but uh, yeah, 13 years is 13 years, however you look at it. So, even if, if, whether it's, you know, chucking corn in the field or, you know, pro wrestling or, you know, on a car assembly line or whatever, uh, you, you're going to know what you're doing after 13 yeah. years. Yeah, but but uh, but still learning, still learning, still learning, still learning every time. Always learning. Yeah, you never stop. Learning. I don't think you ever stop in never this do. business. Never um, do. You're from Memphis, Tennessee. Originally from Memphis. Yeah, I spent uh, 38 years of my life in Memphis. Um, that's actually where I started my wrestling career. Uh, originally started uh, with the Nightmare Ken Wayne School of Wrestling when it was actively funked and uh, defunct now. But I spent about four years there. Uh, learning from Nightmare Ken Wayne, and uh, learning just learning the basics and starting out in the wrestling business and everything, and learning all about production and every, all kinds of other things, and and uh, eventually I'd I'd move out of there and move on and do my own thing, and uh, did my own thing for about three or four years after that, and uh, just retired shortly for from in ring action for about three years. And uh, did uh, announcing and uh, do commentary, and I still do announcing and commentary every now and then. And uh, now it's just, uh, you know, you know they they always say you it's it's like the mafia. You want to get out, but you can't. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. And here I am. Of, I'm, I'm right back at another wrestling school. Been here for two years. So. Yeah, my first show doing commentary, and they say it's a it's a sickness. You know, I did the first show, and I just yep. I couldn't get enough. I wanted to get in deeper into the wrestling got bit by the bug uh, yeah mm -hmm. i love it uh so in memphis you you grew up watching wrestling with the the statue on the turntable yes uh-huh yeah. yes <laughs> and it, you know the, the fun fun fact about that that statue was actually not that big it's probably if, if you put it on the table here it'd probably be about this big but yeah. you know they they brought the camera yeah, in, they drew huge. it in, and it looks huge oh. on TV, and for the years, I thought that was like this huge statue. They've, they've got to have that statue somewhere in yeah, Memphis, you know? Yeah, it looks 12 nope. feet tall. It's, like, it's just this little miniature thing, and but you, you know, zoomed in on it. I mean, is it on like a record turntable? <laughs> pretty much. Right, that's how they, they, pretty, they filmed I, yeah, that. Yes, I, that, I, that's, I'm pretty sure that's so, how they filmed that. Yeah, so you've seen the statue. So, I've, yeah, I have thing. seen the statue, yeah. That's cool. So, well, would that be your earliest wrestling memories? I mean, did you get in watching Memphis wrestling? What, it actually what were you would watching be, as a youngster? It actually would be my earliest uh, memories. Now, the funny part is, is like I originally did not like wrestling um, because that was I, my both, with both my parents working and everything. I would stay with my grandmother and my grandfather on the weekends, and my grandfather that was his stress relief. Come hell or high water, eleven o'clock on Saturday morning, he was watching Channel Five wrestling. And um, <clears throat> he, he, that was his stress relief. It didn't matter what I was watching. If I was watching cartoons, it was just tough luck. You know, it was time for, you know, time for wrestling to be on, and it was yeah. time for him to watch wrestling. So, uh, and originally I hated it because it cut into my cartoon time, man. Yeah. It cut into my cartoon time. So uh, the funny thing is, is like, uh, too, uh, my grandmother didn't want me to watch wrestling. So she would actually uh, put me in the bathtub, make me take a bath or a shower, uh, 
about the 11 o'clock on Saturday mornings and everything, and so I wouldn't watch wrestling. And she didn't want me. She didn't want me watching anything violent. So, yeah. But uh, you know, where was it? Was there a moment moment where it switched for you, or was it just bonding with your grandfather, or was? And originally, I did not get into the Channel Five stuff. You know, what got me into uh, wrestling was I actually caught Saturday night's main event on uh, you know Channel Five. It was NBC. Um, I caught Saturday night's main event WWF. Um, you know Hulk Hogan and uh, you know Ultimate Warrior and all those guys originally back in the 80s when they actually started producing those Saturday nights main events yeah. and they would take the place of Saturday Night Live every now and then on the network and uh, on network TV and that I saw that and the first time I saw that that hooked me because it was just the co- the colorful characters and um, you know the outlandish cartoonish you know style characters and yeah. everything of the 80s that's what drew me into it and that's what made me interested in WWF and then the WWF actually made me more interested in Channel 5 wrestling the, the more local stuff with Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett and everything and uh, once I started paying more attention to that you know looking back at it now it was really fun watching Jeff Jarrett start out in wrestling Yeah. you know the son of Jerry Jarrett the famous uh, wrestling promoter for you know Nashville Tennessee all the air, all the surrounding areas, you know, seeing Jeff Jarrett grow into his own, seeing Jerry Lawler, you know, grow grow into his own and, and become something else in WWF, you know, seeing all that, you know, it was pretty cool, you know, when you get to look back on stuff like that. <clears throat> and what a lot of people don't know that maybe you're growing up watching wrestling now is how special those Saturday night's main events were because yes. now you've got Raw every week, you get to see all the stars. Uh, competing against each other, uh, but back in those days, it was it was an anomaly. It was you you had superstars yeah. or primetime wrestling, and you'd see you had to check the TV guide to find out if if there was going to be one, and you might get one once a month. But but the regular weekly TV, mm-hmm. you'd see the big stars against a nobody. Mm-hmm. You knew who was going to win, but then on Saturday night's main event, you may see Hulk Hogan take on the Genius. Yes, or you know, guys that had actually had some wins under their belts. Yes. And uh, so that was always uh, a lot more exciting. You didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. And it was a better quality match uh, on those Saturday I re- nights. I remember, I remember specifically, like, uh, around the time I really, really started getting into it was Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan versus the Earthquake. That yeah. was, and I'm probably dating myself when I say that. <laughs> but yeah, that was when I was a kid and was watching it, and I, that was the eye opener about, oh man, I love this, you know, because it, it, it was drawing you in, you know, the big guy attacking Hulk Hogan and everything and putting him down and everything. Yeah. So that was that was what drew me in. I, I, I specifically remember Earthquake and Hulk Hogan, that storyline drawing me into it. Yeah, because you saw, you saw Hulk Hogan look vulnerable. Yes. Against this big big earthquake yes big 400 pound guy uh, now you mentioned uh, nightmare Ken Wayne school uh, mm-hmm. wrestling school where you started out yes and um, now you said you were learning production things there too so mm-hmm. uh, how does that compare to SOM I mean, we, we've got a TV production going on here was it pretty similar it's very similar uh, ours is more up-to-date uh, we use computers for everything. We're using webcams for everything. Um, Ken's production, you know, he, he tried to use uh, older style cameras and stuff like that and everything. And we still did good production. I mean, I'll, I'll take nothing away from the production we did at, at uh, Ken's, but uh, this is more up to date and, and uh, you know, it's more uh, streamlined, I should say. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, a sign of the times and, and changing technologies and stuff like that. And, you know, we get to do podcasts like this. And we get to do live events and live streams and stuff like that. We didn't really do too many live streams at Ken's. We did recordings and sent them to yeah. TV and everything and did that. So. Uh, probably very difficult to do those kind of live streams. You said you started 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the technology, the infrastructure yeah, wasn't, it wasn't quite there for the average uh, it wasn't at Joe all. to put together these uh these live streams as we know it's a lot of work here even still today mm-hmm. uh, to get it all together 
Now you talked about doing doing production back there. Uh, you, you've done commentary for a few years. Mm -hmm. You've been wrestling for 13 years. Uh, what would you say? What's your so you've done it all? I've pretty much yeah. I've been behind the camera, in front of the wrestling. camera, running audio, running sound, uh, running lights, um, you know, switching uh, cameras for TV, live switching for cameras for TV. Uh, Did you have a referee? On the show. That is one thing I have not done. You're, you're a little big for a referee. Yeah, uh, that is one thing I have not done as referee. And, uh, it, you know, I think I may have made an appearance as a special referee one time, but I wouldn't. I don't want to lie to you and <laughs> say say yes or no on that. I may have been a special referee at one time, but that, I can't remember, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, the refereeing, I, I think that's really the only thing I haven't done. I've done the announcing commentary and, and run production and, you know, Pretty much all aspects except for that <laughs> yeah and you've uh you've trained under uh nightmare ken wayne nightmare ken wayne he had his tag team with danny davis mm -hmm. the nightmares the nightmares you've uh, you've trained with ricky morton here ricky morton now yeah one of the greatest tag team wrestlers of all time yes uh like you've not really been known as a tag team wrestler not really at not least really. not here at SOM. Not here at SOM. Not here at SOM. I have been in tag teams in other places. And uh, we did pretty good for ourselves. We won tag team gold and we did different things. And, and uh, you know, had some had some good luck uh, as a tag team. Uh, but haven't haven't really found a partner, I guess you could say, here for uh, SOM. <laughs> Who would you, if you were out, if you were scouting for a tag team partner within the roster mm -hmm. here at SOM, who would you go with as a tag team partner? Oh, you know, I think me and Brian Rivers have the same build, you know. For some reason, I thought you were going to say yeah. Brian Rivers. <laughs> I think me and Brian Rivers, we're, we're, we're the same build, we're the same body type. I really think uh, I think we could click as a team, to be honest with you. you know? Yeah. And uh, really, uh, you know, make waves in the tag team division. Yeah, and then you could inflict some real damage, the yes. two of you, I think. Yes, I, th I think, uh, you know. Me and uh, I think we're of the same mindset when it comes to being in the ring. <laughs> we just yeah. want to we just want to hurt somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And uh, well, uh, what else is in the future for Dangerous Dan here at SOM? Where where do you say this ride taking you? You know, I I, I honestly don't know, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be here, and I'm gonna give 150 percent to this promotion. Uh, this is, you know, this is my home promotion, and uh, this is where I see me possibly, you know, ending my career or whatever, you know, if you want to call it that. Uh, I've already retired once, and, uh, you know, I couldn't stay retired. Yeah, wrestling so, retirements. Yeah. <laughs> you know, possibly that Terry Funk retirement where you retire 11 times and, you know, yeah. you never can really get out of it, you know. But, uh, you know, it... Uh, it, uh, it, it's it's interesting to see how this has grown just in the time that I've been here. And uh, I'm really excited for the future of SOM, and I'm excited uh, where we're going, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Well, and uh, we're excited to have you listening, folks, uh, to the SOM uh, live podcast here. Uh, Dan Matthews, thank you for joining us joining me here today pleasure to be here hope and, i'm hope i'm back sometime soon oh yeah <laughs> I, I think we're going to be doing this regularly uh so keep listening folks and uh and stay with us uh with more som <laughs>